this is a serious problem for the Met. Saturday night, uh, more than a thousand women came to pay their respects to Sarah Everard, uh, e exactly around the area where she uh, went missing. Um, it, people there are very concerned about the safety of women. Um, and then we end up with women being arrested, put on the ground, surrounded by police officers. What went wrong on Saturday night? Well, Susanna, I totally recognise that the, the footage uh, from Saturday night was alarming and distressing to many people. And it's, it's very sad that um, an event, as you say, that was for people to come and commemorate uh, this extraordinary person who's been subject to this horrific crime um, ended that way. Uh, the Home Secretary has asked for an independent review of what actually happened on Saturday night, and that will uh, tell us over the next couple of weeks uh, broadly the chain of events and the decision making that that happened. But I also think we ought to reflect on the context that over the last 10 or 12 months, you know, we've put the police in a very challenging position for them. They, we've asked them to do something they've never done before, which is to stand between us and the virus. And everything that they've done with regard to that has been about protecting public health um, and to make sure that we get on top of this thing. And just at this critical moment of our um, of our national journey through our battle, if you like, with COVID, uh, that we have that in the forefront of our mind. And I have to say, I saw your your moving interview actually with with Patsy uh, just before, and I, I was grateful for what she said. But about the as moving on to talk about this wider issue of violence against women and girls, and and that's why the prime minister okay. called it in this afternoon. So you have this, I, I, you know, you have this balance all along, don't you? between the coronavirus legislation and you removed process, pr protest as an exemption uh, for gathering. So you have the balance of public health, but then you have an issue where women are saying they are afraid of being killed. And uh, do, in that situation, is it not a time to say, we're going to stand back? We're going to stand back and allow you to firstly pay your respects and secondly, express your fears, your concerns. And we're not going to go in and start arresting women who say no. they are afraid of violence. Well, Susanna, the decision making on the day, um, on the night, sorry, will be will be what is examined as part of this independent review. Uh, but, you know, there are lots and lots of profoundly important uh, human assemblies that sadly have been curtailed or prevented during coronavirus from yes, funerals. There are so many that have also, the... uh, of course, but there are also so many that have gone ahead and people have seen the Extinction Rebellion protests go ahead, the Black Lives Matter protests go ahead. And women on Saturday were wondering why there were vigils and protests around the country which could go ahead where police stood back. Yeah. But on Saturday night, precisely in the place where Sarah Everard lost her life, that mm. the protest couldn't go ahead. Well, as I say, in the as I understand it, in the sort of six hours or so up to about six o'clock, lots of people were attending um, quietly in a socially distanced way and paying their respects. Obviously, there was a confluence events and a change in dynamic where the police decided to take a different uh, approach because they were concerned about public safety and health and the independent review will look at that decision making and come to some kind of, of conclusion but I think as the commissioner of the Met said you know if, if it had been legal I know lots of metropolitan police officers would have been there not least because this crime has been devastating for them in terms of its implications and what's since so the end and so, so I, I think we should just wait for that independent review, but at the same time focus on what is a natural sense of concern, anger and sorrow about yeah. violence in the public realm, particularly focused on women, and talk about what we have been doing and what we can do in the future to confront it. We heard uh, Sir Patrick Vallance just last week, the Chief Scientific Advisor, uh, explaining to MPs that the risks of outdoor transmission of the virus are very, very small. It's difficult to see how outdoor gatherings lead to spikes. Uh, in July, he said the Black Lives Matter protests had not been followed by any virus surge. We see that from some of the demonstrations that have taken place over the last couple of months, so far we have not seen an uptick in cases. Understanding the sensitivities around this particular vigil and the fact that we had the chief scientific advisor just saying last week to MPs that there is no correlation between an uptake 
and people gathering together outside. You can see why the frustration there will be from some of these protesters that the police waded in in terms and, and are using public safety as the reason for them to do that. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you refer to them as protesters. And I know many, most people came to that gathering as mourners uh, to express their grief and sorrow about what happened and point towards a wider thematic. And, you know, the dynamics of that particular um, uh, meeting assembly uh, will be the subject of this investigation. But I, you know, I can remember uh, interviews on your very program uh, where um, uh, Piers Morgan, who I know has now moved on, you know, challenged ministers about the Cheltenham Festival uh, going ahead in the early parts of the of the coronavirus pandemic. And we've been learning as we go about what this does present. But in these circumstances, you know, the law is clear that mass assemblies are illegal. Um, and in fact, the organisers of that vigil uh, cancelled the official vigil. What the police were dealing with was a, a, an informal gathering. Was that a mistake, though, in... Kit Morehouse? Was that a mistake to cancel the official vigil? Which I think, as Pat Patsy explained, uh, if that had happened, there would have been people set up to uh, police, uh, when I say police, I mean uh, sort of uh, members of the public who had joined uh, to be there would have been helping people to make sure they stayed socially distanced. To they would have been in bubs. They would have been absolutely mm. capable of stewarding the situation before anything happened where the police had to get involved. Well, look, there was obviously a court challenge to that and the situation stood. And while, uh, as I say, this investigation will examine over the next couple of weeks what happened and the decision making, what I'm really keen uh, for us to talk about is the work we have been doing and what more we can do, as I say, on this widespread issue of violence against women and girls. This event has become a focus for much of that concern and anger, something which I, and I know the Prime Minister, have shared now for well over a, a decade. We worked on this when we were together at City Hall in charge of crime uh, in London in particular. We, in fact, we published the first first ever violence against women and girls strategy in the country and certainly in a major global city. So there's lots that we've done and lots more to do. And while, as I say, we'll just have to hold fire while the investigation takes place, I do think that we can do a lot more against on violence and women, against women and girls. And that's what we'll be focusing on over, over the next few hours as we have this meeting with the Prime Minister and months and years as we confront do this you, issue. Um, look, as policing minister, do you support the police when they say the legislation is there for us to intervene because we had to disperse people under the coronavirus legislation. So I obviously support the police enforcing the law in all its aspects, yes. So you support what the police did on Saturday night? So I support the fact that the police determined that the uh, assembly would be illegal. Uh, the decision making on the ground by ground commanders is an operational decision uh, by the police. But it would be a very strange situation if a minister of the crown were to say to the police, you know what, you can waive this bit of the law, it doesn't really apply. That's not proper and that's not my job. Our job, and the police are quite happy uh, to undergo this, is to hold them to account when things do come to public concern, as this have has, but also sit with them and devise strategies uh, to deal with the underlying problem of violence against women and girls, and indeed, violence across the whole of the country. I mean, we've been doing a huge amount over the last 18 months on drug-related violence, on domestic murder, on domestic abuse, where you know we've got a landmark bill appearing, uh, just coming to the end of its passage through the House, and indeed, we're putting a bill um, into the House just today for two days of debate, which will look at strengthening police powers around violence, bringing everybody okay. together, shoulder okay. to shoulder on that but mission. But the police also, sure they, the the police also have to police with consent, they don't do. they? That, and it is important if women are saying they are afraid that they don't then get pinned to the ground and arrested. Well, as I say, we will, the, the, the investigation, I'm sorry to keep coming back to this, but you'll understand, the. Rec I wasn't there on the night, um, and there are lots of accounts coming through, and I heard Patsy's accounts, and obviously the inspectorate will go in and look at the circumstances and come to some kind of a view, and the commissioner... Uh, Professor Dick seems comfortable with that, which is, you know, great, because what you want in a police force that is quite rightly, as you say, Susanna, based on consent, is a willingness to be accountable and transparent. Okay. And does Dame Cressida Dick, as the commissioner, have the full confidence of the Home Secretary? She does, yes, and mine. OK. All right. Kit Malthouse, thanks very much indeed.